Dr. George Harrell's planning skills were so outstanding that the then president, J. Phyllis Miller, essentially asked him to be dean in 1953. Harrell's appointment became official in 1954. He was dean of the College of Medicine, but he was planning a health center. Dr. Samuel Proctor did oral history interviews with other founding faculty members. And they do talk about his skills as a planner. And I guess a lot of that really boiled down to he could kind of see the whole picture. He wanted a health center that would not be just this warren that kind of grew organically. He wanted it to come on board in stages. He logically planned out buildings and the growth of buildings and the creation of new buildings so that you might start with a College of Medicine with one building because that's what you could afford and you wanted to get things going right away. But you also wanted to plan for the future. So the medical sciences building was the first one built that had classrooms, labs, the library, but it didn't have a hospital. So medical students couldn't be trained in the hospital. And so the hospital came along in two years. But all of this planning for you know, this staged planning, he would make it visually apparent with his blocks. Dr. Harrell is famous for having his blocks and he would bring them out and talk about, well, this is the first building that will come on board, and then this is the next. And so he really uh, loved to be able to show people how things would, would happen and how the growth would occur. One of the things that he thought was important were windows in classrooms, that they should be at a level so students could see out the window, and particularly so they could see a view of nature. The same for the hospital. So when he was planning hospital rooms, he wanted the windows to be at the level where someone in the hospital bed could see out of the window and again, hopefully have a view of nature. In some ways, he was ahead of his time. There were innovations that he made that perhaps weren't quite as recognized as being important then, but have since been recognized. One of them was actually medical humanities as a field in medicine. He actually founded the first department of medical humanities in the world at Penn State. And since then, medical humanities have become very important in, in all the medical schools. And he did that because he really believed that doctors should be well-rounded. Another aspect of education that he championed was interprofessional education. So he advocated and he worked with the Dean of the College of Nursing to try and have nursing students and medical students take classes together and train together. And that focus on interprofessional education is another thing that has become the direction of education and healthcare, but it also gave UF really an early start in interprofessional education.